right, well, welcome. Um, I'm going to do two things today, uh, sort of an introduction to flamenco techniques for ukulele. The first one is a rumba strum, and it's one of the most useful things you'll ever learn. Um, depending on whether you've been with me before, you may have seen it, but it's always good to have review. And then the second one is a fun uh, little excerpt of Malaganias, the melody from Malaganias, and something just to have a little piece you can play um, with the mini tremolo and also the uh, uh, the intro and the melody itself that we all know so well. We'll get to that second. Let's go right to the rumba. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn an eight beat pat pattern. It could be 16th notes, eighth notes, whatever. Just if there's eight strokes to this pattern. And you don't have to look at your sheet right now that I gave you because it's got a, a couple of confusing things that I'll tell you about in the end. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to learn the second half first. So everyone take your palm and put it lightly over the strings like this and just tap it like this. Now from there, we're going to stick to the body and then you pull straight up with your index. It's just like a little spring, almost like whoop, whoop, whoop. it's going to cross the strings up towards your nose. So tap up. And then usually it comes kind of right across where the, the frets end. And you don't even really have to tap that hard. Some people get in. It's a big backbeat once you start. But just stop the sound. And if you go like this, if this is ringing, it'll stop the sound. And it'll go tap, up, tap, up, tap. Thing you don't want to do this is the the easy part to get in the rabbit hole the wrong way right away is to is to tap and then bounce off and then try to play because that gives you an extra beat that you don't want it goes tap and then pull straight up so tap up tap up tap up. you can do this for hours just to get used to it That's the, uh, that's going to be beat five and six, five, six, seven, eight. And all you're going to do is down up and you can use your whole hand and your thumb back up. You can use just this finger to start. That's probably the easiest. So tap up, down, up, tap. And then let's try putting just the G7 on so that sounds a little bit nicer. Tap up, down, up, tap up, down, up, tap up, down, up, tap. And I'm just using my index, so it's tap up, index, index, tap up, in. just a little flick of the first finger. So your first finger your index is handling three strokes. It's handling the tap, flip it up, and then a straight down up with your kind of wrist, however you're normally strong. And let's go between this and a C chord just for fun. Here's a C. by itself it is actually a, a version of the calypso strum or even so sad to say I'm on my way won't be back for many a day it's just a calypso strum very cool and very easy but it's also the second half of the flamenco rumba the thing you really don't want to do is get into the swing part of it either Especially in the ukulele world, it's very easy to accidentally go into that 
sort of lilting swing. This one is very, very Latin. And Latin music a lot of times has straight eighth notes the whole time, which means one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as opposed to this kind of thing. So tap, up, down, up, tap, up, down. Really kind of rigid eighth notes. And our happy groove is going to come from the syncopations. Tap, up, down, up. There's another way to practice. You put your hand over the strings and don't press down just just hold them lightly so you get a, a snap like a percussion and you can really hear what you're doing tap up once again hold to the body don't bounce right there it's going to tap and pull right up with your index tap up down up tap up down up tap up down A lot of this is just kinesthetic learning where you do it over and over and over and over until you're, it just kind of climbs into your bones and you can't do it wrong. You have to feel it. Okay, now that's the second half. Let's do one, two, three, four, and this is the easy part. You just go down, up, down, up, just like you're strumming. And I'm going to use this finger for right now. The hard part is putting them together because you have to zip back it around and you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, and then it starts over. So let's try this super slow. Down, up, down, up, tap, up, down, up. And you can play this evenly, no matter how beginning you are, but you have to go slow enough. So if you're, if you're having trouble, that means you're going too fast. So later on, if I'm going too fast now, you can pr play this literally like down, up, down, up, tap, up. And the thing I like about practicing this slow, down, up, down. You can pay attention to the strokes. Even though I'm practicing slow, the strokes are fast. They're going by the string. You can almost take a picture of your hand stopping. Down, up. By doing this super slow and getting it really clean, you're going to automatically have speed later. You just are when you, when you get it going. Okay, let's do this really slow. Down, up, down, up, tap, up. And let's put an E7 on. This is the, the final magic that makes the strum work, is the up that happens right before the tap, you make just a tiny bit louder. So it's going to be down, up, down, up, tap, up, down, up. So it's one, two, three, four, tap, up. And sometimes I'll play that with my thumb. If that's too hard right now, don't worry about it. You can get it later. But I play the Roomba actually with my whole hand instead of just that finger and sometimes but I still tap up with that little finger right here and you can get into your whole paw using the strings as loud as you want later on but for now down up down up tap up down just use your first finger and if you can put a little accent right before the tap happens 
If you look in your score, it says hand right, HP, HP, box, H, HP, which just means hand, 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 thumb, hand, thumb, tap, up, hand, thumb. And that's like the big, really loud flamenco guitar version, but I just use this most of the time when I'm teaching because it'll give you the same stroke. And you can add more fingers to it later if you want. So from a very slow standpoint, I'm going to do this like a machine, and then I'm going to speed it up. And then when it starts to speed up, I lighten up a lot. And I'm not working quite as hard, and then that accent will actually give you the Latin heartbeat, as it's called. Listen, listen to this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. This is very, very mechanical. Get it to where you can get this going. And if you speed up just a hair, I'm going to go a lot lighter. And now listen to this accent. That's your heartbeat. Exactly, that's all we're doing is the rumba strum. Down, up, down, up, tap, up, down, up. The fancy stuff comes from really feeling the groove and that one, two, three, up, that's the one that gets you. The little accent, boom, and that's down, up, down, up, that'd be number four, down, up, down, up, and then five, six, seven, eight is tap, up, down. Nice and slow. Now I'm going to play it really fast here just so you can hear what it sounds like. But I will tell you if you if you play this super, super slow for an hour, like literally for an hour, it's it's not going to hurt because it actually it's good for your tendons to do this strum. So you can't really hurt yourself by just doing this over and over and over. And you'll get really good at it. Just go slow. And here I'm going to speed it up. quicker I'm gonna lighten up a bit and this is a crazy strum because once you get good at it It's like that fast Gypsy Kings kind of stuff. Uh, well, Mike, it's fantastic for anything. Check this out. Um, I'm going to put it on any song in 4 4. You are my sunshine. See? So you just like Latinize any song that you know that's in 4. Or you can force a song that's in 3 to be in 4. Like. This is my favorite one to pull out at the kitchen table. Happy birthday to you. It's a fun way to do a birthday song. Just turn it into happy birthday in four, play a Roomba on it. And that's all you need to know to do that. I will come back and I'll break that down one more time, but let's go over to the Malaguenas for now. So switch gears completely. And if you need to get that music up, it might help. Now this guy is really fun. Um, I'm using a low G right now, and I'll show you. I've got a high G with me, and I'll show you the difference in sound when we get to that spot. But for now, we're going to play a D minor. 
and then a C, and then a B flat, not everybody's favorite chord, but this is a better one because you don't have to use a bar. It's three, two, one, open, B major seven, but it's very flamenco. So all I'm gonna do is take this as an introduction, sort of, it's also called the hit, hit the road jack, but it's very flamenco, muy flamenco. So. Stuff that you know, like if you know how to fill in. Any kind of technique you know, that gives you that basic intro. Um, this is the melody. It's a melody gain, yes. Uh, we're going to start on A. You hit that chord, and then you do just a little... Let's try that. Play an A chord, and we're going to go on the first string, open, first, three, open, as well. open, one, three, one, open, just a little tiny scale. Try that with me. A chord, and then on the first string, What's fun is to make the first chord short. So you have to stop the chord, A, and then you can do that. Here's the next melody. And that's just the second string, open, three, one, open. Same thing as the first one, basically. Using the same fingers. Now end on a D minor. Try that together. Open three, one, open D minor. Now let's put them together. So we're going to have A. Now the second part. Land on D minor. And you can make that short. You can make it long if you like. Here's the one that sneaks around a little bit. This is going to take the C string. Longer here, we're gonna go two, one, two, open. But once again, just one and three on the other strings. Let's try this one really slow. So put your um, this is after, right after the D minor. I leave the D minor on and then play with my. And it goes back to the A. That's kind of the whole thing here. Let me play it for you slowly. studies you can play this over and over and over and over and get better at it and take it from really slow to fast and then back to slow and it's actually a musical exciting thing to do because listen to what happens when you go super slow Each of the sections of this song does exactly that. You just ramp kind of up and then come back down. And you can play them in any order. If I finish that, I can go back to the beginning and sort of fill it in. Now here's that section. However slow you need to do it. in between and you can go to the next section. This one is very famous sounding 
And this is the one spot where if you have a re-entrant, it'll really sound a, a bit different because one of the, part of the melody is going to jump an octave. But basically, it goes like this. All I'm doing is four, three, two, four on the strings. And then I'm going to go to a D minor chord. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go play and kind of peel off. to A. So it's actually pretty easy, but it sounds very cool. This is low G. Let me show you what that sounds like with high G, just so you get a, a feel for it. If you've got your high G, that last part's going to jump an octave. See? So the only two notes are B flat and A that changed. Still sounds just fine. So I'll go back to this guy because you can hear the melody linearly go all the way down to the A. just with your thumb, you get used to it um, over and over and over. The next two sections, we're just going to add just picking on the A string. So check this out. We're still going to go like this. Let's see. But I'm going to put my index finger in between on the A string. So check it out. In between every single note. Sorry, thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb. If you want a closer look, it looks like this. Let's see. Here we go. So just the first string ringing in between each melody note on the bass. Obviously, you can you just want to go faster with this. And then slower. You take a little break. The next thing you do, you play it again. But this time you're going to add two fingers. So now it's going to go thumb, middle, index. Don't do it the other way around. It'll be a lot harder. So you sweep in with these two. So thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. It's a little triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. Really not as hard as you would think once you get going. This one might take a little work, really snap. One of the things that helps immensely with this kind of playing is to catch your fingers. Check this out. Instead of just playing, I'm going to go. See, I caught it with my first finger with where it's about to play. So, so I'm going to go and catch it. Stops the sound and articulates. Also makes you know exactly where that finger is going to play next. Once you get going way too fast, that articulation is hard to hold on to. So here's that whole section after I've finished. I'll start with
then one with the doubles. Here's where it gets totally crazy. <laughs> then you can go. short little piece that you can just work on technique and melody. Um, if you get crazy, uh, it's not in the score, but you can add three fingers and that's a full tremolo, which would be starting from your ring finger. That's a little harder to manage. That one takes a long time to get really good at, but if you want to, um, the, the twos is really easy. Now, most people don't know this, but the reason it's so easy to play with these three fingers and then this one's a little rougher is because these share a tendon. They have the same tendon and you have to really work slowly and carefully to get them to do what they're supposed to do without it hurting after a while or whatever. But a lot of people just go to three fingers. I love the ring finger myself. I think it's people should use it as much as they can. This particular piece, you don't need it though, okay? So, um, are there any questions in the chat yet about any of you? Or we, am I just slamming people in there <laughs> trying to keep up? <laughs> we don't have any questions in the chat yet. <clears throat> I think probably because I mean, I know I've just been trying to follow along. Um, but <laughs> we'll take a quick, we'll take a pause right here. Does anybody have questions? You can either put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and, uh, and feel free to ask Daniel any questions you may have kind of make people practice like a little time. So there's not a lot of room for people typing until we take a break here. I'm gonna go back to the Roomba here and we'll, we'll do that. And then I'm gonna go back to the Malaganus. We'll do that one more time, flip back and forth and do a little bit of review. And we can also have questions at the very end too. We good? Okay. All right, well, let's take a look at the Roomba. And I'm going to give you the rundown of how to practice it again, but I'm also going to give you a variation, which a lot of times we don't get to in class, depending on how people are doing. Um, this one seems to be going on just splendidly, so check it out. Here's what you can do now. We've learned to go down, up, down, up, tap, up, down, up. Now, if you want to, any down can be a finger or it can be a hand. You can try just using your whole whatever is most comfortable. And any up can also be a thumb. And this is like a wrist thing. Instead of trying to play it like this, just flip your wrist up towards your nose. I use that one specifically before the tap to make the accent a lot of times. So check it out. Down, up, down, up, tap, up, tap. And it actually works pretty nicely to take your thumb in a little tiny, super loose, almost fist. But at the same time that that op goes, you open your hand and land. So I just finger, 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 thumb, tap, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, tap. And that little up, and spreading your hand suddenly gives you that nice tap and then instantly pull up with that guy. And as slow as you need to, down, up, down, up, tap, up, down, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom. That little accent is the one that's gonna make it sound magic. Cause here's what it sounds like fast with no accent. There's a lot more music in that second one than <laughs> right and with chords that's not so bad but if you add
nice. So if you want to, um, you don't have to put this in ever or learn it, but it's kind of fun to have a variation every once in a while. So instead of going tap, up, down, up, this is five, six, seven, eight, five. <laughs> We're going to go like this. Take your two fingers together. Um, kids call these the spidey fingers. I call them a coyote. Whatever, whatever works for you. The middle guys, and just lightly tap right there. Just let them hit the body. And then go up with your index and do it twice. So it's gonna be tap, up, tap, up. Tap, up, tap, up. You can do this as many times as you like. So these go down across the strings, down across the strings. You can go back, go back and forth. Here's the tap up here. Here's the tap up, tap, tap, up, down, up, tap, up, tap. This is just a variation, an A and a B, if you like, for the second half. Here's what it's going to sound like. Down, up, down, up, tap. Down. Tiki, tiki, down. Tap, up, down. Tiki, tiki. Now that's getting way more complicated in sound, but it's actually just one, two, three, four. Here's A. Tap, up, down, up. And here's B. One, two, three, four. Tiki, tiki. I just used that. I don't know if that's anyone else calls it that, but I do. Down, up, down, <laughs> tap, up, down. Down, up, down, up, tiki, tiki, boom. And then you hear the sound in your ear, it's going to be boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, tick, tick, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, tick, 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 boom, ba, boom. And here's, it sounds really cool, and I use it a lot of times for transition. If I'm going to a different section of the song, I'll throw that in just for one bar, but for now, I'll do it back and forth over and over. So. leaves the strings ringing. You hear this? Tap, stop, bump, ring. Stop. Stop. And it'll give you a nice transition. Let me play through some of that exercise that you have and I'll, I'll randomly put it in in places instead of straight back and forth. I'll just do this for a while. That way, you kind of have a, a palette of different sounds that you can use. If you're playing, for instance, with a percussionist or a drummer, you can also find really interesting ways to use this strum differently, just with your ears, by switching back and forth between those two patterns. Alrighty, so that's a lot of stuff if you've just started. Um, with the Roomba pattern, major review is do it super slow, but make your hand go quickly through the strokes. Do the accent on four, one, two, three, four, and then the five, six, seven, eight. Stick to the body and pull right up. Don't bounce from this guy. And you can also do this just as a calypso strum. The second half, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. And then the pattern that I added is down, up, down, up, and then tap with these two fingers, pull back with your index twice. Down, up, down, up, tap, down, ticky, ticky. Okay, so that's the, the final review for the, for the Roomba. Do we have any questions about any of that crazy stuff before we move into the Malagueños? No? Okay, fantastic. Alrighty, well let's take a look at the melody of the Malagueñas. Um, basically, I'm using D minor, C, B flat, with 
no bar. Now if you want to, you can also move this up the neck. Here's an A, here's a B flat with no bar. Here's this up two frets, C with no bar, B flat with no bar. And they do that a lot in the guitar world where they just move these shapes up. And I'm just basically playing an A chord and then moving it up to a B flat and adding this finger because that would be the, the proper shape, but no bar. This is still ringing. Now, up two more frets. Down two frets. Uh huh. And you can even use this. So, do you see what I did there? I stole the last line uh, where you have the doubles in that little tremolo section. Go ahead and look at the last line. But instead of doing. I'm just going. So A, B flat made for seven. And this is a C, but I'm just moving up two frets. And then back to the B flat. A string stays the whole time. And here's the doubles. And you can just mess around with that for hours. Those are cool chords. Add the D minor if you want. Walk all the way back down. That's a way of centering yourself in the key in flamenco is going back and forth between A and B flat over and over and over. Now here's the melody. If you want to, you can start putting a little bit of a scrape on the first part instead of just... I'm going to go with a fan like that and then stop it. Again, we got this guy. And try to get your fingers, this is just an A chord, twice. I'm gonna put the whole D chord on right now. And I'm gonna just play the middle of it. And then peel off one finger. So my middle finger didn't even move the entire time. Now D minor, middle of the chord. First fret open, second open, third. You don't even have to stop, you can just go over to the next section. That's basically your whole tune. I mean, um, what I am doing is I'm using, a, this is a tiny bit of theory, and as my wife Heidi always says, don't worry, it's, music's just a theory, it's never been proven, it's not gonna too scary, so. We're gonna take the A chord and the D minor. This song is actually in D minor, but the A sounds like the center for our ears. The scale we're gonna use is very simple. Starting from the third fret, this is the C chord that you would normally play. Let's play down. Three, one, open. Next string is three, one, open. Next one's gonna be interesting. We're gonna go two, one. And it gives you a very Spanish sound. So this is kind of a fun thing. Um, Playing down the scale and then put an A chord on there. You can center yourself by going A, B flat. 
flat, A, and any one of those notes. You use it just like a little, like you would a, a pentatonic scale or anything to improvise. If you stick to those notes, one, open one three, open one three, and then two one, you will have fantastic sounding Spanish. It's a harmonic minor scale. So that's really fun actually because it's an easy scale, but it's also a way to sound pretty complicated harmonically. And let's take it down again from D minor. This is the very beginning. C is a normal C. B flat. A lot of times before I start the next part, I'll put that little scale in there so it sounds like this. Also use that scale to improvise anything near the end like if I'm playing and I'll end the whole song like that with a little scale most of the Malagueñas in in um, flamenco this is a specific song that we're used to but there are hundreds of uh, songs from Malaga which is why they're called Malagueñas, and they have a specific pattern to them, which is very similar to this. And most of them are rubato. Rubato basically means that you can play them freely, um, not out of time, but sort of you can bend the time, which is what we were doing with this guy. So yeah, I'm kind of moving the time around rather than doing really strict. Interestingly, you can kind of feel it. So that's rubato, okay? This whole piece that I've given you is sort of meant to be played in sections and then just move them around. And once you've got it, just play with it, improvise with it. You don't have to play it straight down. Use each section to get some technique or put these techniques on. Uh, a song that you're learning, you can use these little guys on any group of chords, you know? Doesn't sound quite so flamenco here. That was just C, F, and G right there. So mess around with the right hand stuff, the rumba stuff, and take it not just from the handouts that I've given you, but take it right to your music and put it on there and see if you can improvise your way into some new techniques, okay? So that is basically the whole deal right there. I'm going to stop because I think we are actually in a good spot. Let's have some questions if you really want to now. And I have a question actually. <clears throat> so during the um this last one i noticed that when for your um you know your bottom three notes you're using only your thumb <clears throat> as opposed to using one finger on each string what right. are the um so kind of wh why would we do that and why does that you know what are the pros of doing that right um one of the things that the flamenco players really are good at is using your thumb there's several reasons that you can do it. First, it's it's incredibly lightning fast once you start playing with it a lot, and it's loud. So it, if you're playing, this is basically a melody in the bass. Is that if I played it? See, that's a little bit not quite as strong. up your other fingers 
to have a counter melody when your thumb can kind of do all of the arpeggiation and put stuff under a chord. Um, and like I said, it's also just really powerful. So once you start getting used to, and um, if you've ever done a rest stroke thumb, you'll see how loud, how loud the ukulele can actually be. So um, that hopefully answers your question, but it's, it's super fast, it's agile, it's loud, and it's easier for these other guys to open up and do other stuff underneath it. Do you have any other questions for Daniel? Comments? How's your Saturday going? <laughs> been in practice for a while now. <laughs> yeah. What time is it there, Teiko? Oh, I guess you didn't hear me. <laughs> oh, it's 1 a.m. Oh, jeez. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. <laughs> What city are you in? I forgot. Tokyo. Okay, nice, nice. You're in the big one. Well, thanks for coming. It was good to see you. Ah, good to see you too. It was a great lesson. Yeah, and thank you everybody else for coming. And, thank uh, you so much. That should do it. That's a really, you know, concise two different things. Just do them really slow and a lot, and they'll start to get into your playing. Um, they're techniques, but they're also musical. Um, things that get under your skin if you do them a lot so wonderful so um <clears throat> the recording will be emailed out to everybody so you can i know that i'm gonna have to go back and watch and slow it down and practice for a while um but in the chat like i said at the very beginning daniel's website is there the ukc's website is there the email address for UKC Academy if you have any questions is there as well as the YouTube link for the playlist of all of our previous UKC Academy classes so you can go back and pick and choose whichever you may want to watch and work on. So like I mentioned earlier too, stay tuned to the uh, stay tuned to our social media as well as your emails now that you're on our list, um, I'll be, you'll be getting emails from me on all of the upcoming UKC academies so that you can sign up and register for any that you like. Fantastic. Yay. Nice. Well, happy Saturday to everybody. Sunday to take home. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, yeah? Right, guys. Thank you all so much for coming. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. La 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 la